Suppose you've got $500 budgeted for a new tablet, but you can't decide between Android and iOS. Well, we've got two of the latest examples of each here in the studio, so let's put them head to head. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Sony's Xperia Tablet Z versus Apple's iPad. Just a quick note before we start. While we took a gander at the fourth generation Apple iPad and a few earlier videos, we're using the third generation iteration for this comparison because that's the one we have here in the office. Because most buyers will be considering the more modern iPad with its improved processor and forward camera, we're not comparing benchmarks or app launch times. We'll only compare metrics that are equally applicable to the iPad 4. Our aim is to give a slice of life perspective to those buyers torn between these tablets, and we'll do that in three categories, build, software, and loose ends. You don't even need to pick these devices up to see their wildly divergent design backgrounds. It doesn't take noticing the manufacturer logos to know that these are going to offer very different user experiences. The aspect ratio is probably the most notable difference here. With a 4x3 aspect, the iPad appears chunkier on its face than the 16x9 Tablet Z, a perception helped along by the fact that the iPad is indeed about 2.5mm thicker than Sony's product. Picking the tablets up makes it immediately clear that the iPad is indeed the more robust device. At 652 grams, it masses over 150 grams more than the Tablet Z. That gives the iPad a more premium feel than the Tablet Z, but it also makes it more cumbersome. One-handed use in landscape is much more difficult, and holding the iPad above your face to read in bed becomes a chore after a while. The iPad's anodized aluminum casing is also slippery in the hand, while the rubberized plastic of the Tablet Z is easy to grip. It's not all wins for the Sony offering, though. Because of that 4 to 3 aspect ratio, the iPad feels quite natural to use in portrait orientation, while the Tablet Z turned on its side is just bad hilariously bad. Also, the iPad's thoroughly minimalistic design, with penetrations only for the bare essentials like volume, power, and home keys, truly is beautiful. While the Tablet Z is also an attractive product, its design is significantly less streamlined, its ports hidden away behind finicky little hatches that aren't so much fun to deal with. But there's a reason for those. The ports themselves provide for a micro SD card for memory expansion beyond the 16 or 32 gigs of onboard storage, expandability not found on the iPad, and the port covers make possible the Tablet Z's IP55, 57, and IP5X dust and water resistance ratings. Ratings the comparatively fragile iPad can't match. There's also IR and NFC on the Tablet Z, in addition to an FM radio, features Apple's product doesn't include. In terms of the displays, each panel is an IPS LCD, with the Tablet Z's screen edging out the iPads in sheer size by a little less than half an inch. The iPad, though, is the winner in pixel density, beating out Sony by about 40 ppi. That's not really detectable, though, and they're each capable of pretty extreme brightness, with the Tablet Z producing slightly warmer whites. Readability in bright daylight is right about on par, and watching video is a pleasure on each with a slight edge going to the iPad for side visibility. The Tablet Z's Mobile Bravia Engine 2 continuously adjusts the display for optimum performance, so we noticed more saturation more often on the Tablet Z. Whether this is a plus or a minus for you depends on your own personal taste. They're both outstanding screens. In terms of audio, while we like the Tablet Z's speaker position at the lower left corners better than the iPad's rear firing arrangement, the Apple device is the clear winner in terms of sound quality. Yes, the iPad's single side speaker is less dynamic than Sony's faux 3D surround effect, but Apple's speaker is also louder, bassier, and frankly, just better all around. Of course, the much more significant difference between these devices is that of software. And on the tablet front, the war of Android versus iOS, and increasingly Google versus Apple, is a fierce one. On the iPad, you're given very little to experiment with. With version 6.1.3, you get the same 4x5 grid of apps and folders, the same pop-up row of currently running apps and shortcuts, the same notification center we've been seeing for years. If you've used previous iPads or iPhones, you'll feel right at home. And even if you haven't, you'll pick it up in a jiffy. That's the whole idea. Sony's custom build of Android 4.1.2 on the Tablet Z is a different story. Because it's Android, it's highly customizable with widgets and custom launchers, allowing you to modify it extensively to suit your own needs. 
and Google integration is tighter here than on almost any other tablet. Now, because it's Sony, the software is already heavily tweaked for usability and a unique aesthetic, and it leverages the Tablet Z's unique hardware in features like Double Tap to Wake and the Remote Control app, and there's also small apps here for multitasking. On the iPad, the reward you get for putting up with the tired old iOS software is an app ecosystem larger and more elaborate than any other, with beautifully designed tablet apps that take full advantage of the added screen real estate that a nearly 10-inch screen provides. You also get tight integration with Apple's own ecosystem, of course, and a pretty handy virtual assistant in the form of Siri. Should I buy an iPad or an Android tablet? That's an easy one. Check out iPad at the Apple Store and you'll see why. On the Tablet Z, you pay the price for the tight Google integration with a much less mature app ecosystem, with many popular titles still merely stretched out versions of their smartphone selves, and some coded only for portrait, so you're forced to use the Z in the least appealing position possible. Depending on your Android build, you may also sacrifice a bit in terms of responsiveness. Android has come a long way, but the custom build on the Tablet Z isn't as fluid as the iOS experience on our iPad. There's more to these devices than ecosystems, of course, and like it or not, the camera is one of them. Sony's 8.1 megapixel Exmor R for mobile camera offers a lot of customizability and a ton of shooting modes, but it comes up short in the final product, with fuzzy edges and a washed out look. The iPad's interface is almost maddeningly simplistic but the output from its 5-megapixel iSight camera is also far superior, with crisp edges and authentic color tones. Of course, the field of view on each isn't great, and come on, do you really want to be that guy taking pictures with a tablet? But if you do, and even if you use tablet cameras for more practical applications like scanning text, these differences might matter to you. Of even more import might be how long the device will last while you're using it. The newest edition of the iPad boasts slightly improved battery life because of its newer processor, and on the spec sheet, its battery capacity of 11,600 plus milliamp hours destroys the Tablet Z's 6,000 milliamp hour pack. There are times when spec sheets do reflect real world reality, and this is one of them. Though it's not as long lasting as earlier versions, in terms of our own, admittedly unscientific, testing, the new iPad still beats the Tablet Z in endurance. Now, Sony's tablet does offer very handy tweaks like stamina mode and highly customizable power profiles to go along with it, so you're not going to bleed it dry in less than a day. But under our normal testing conditions, it doesn't last as long as the iPad in moderate use. Whether that compromise and the others are worth the Tablet Z's slim lines and water-resistant rating remains up to you. Similarly, you alone will have to decide whether the iPad's incredible ecosystem advantage makes up for its dull software experience, an experience very likely to change when WWDC starts on June 10th. Then again, the mere presence of beautiful Android tablets like the Z might spur developers to finally give the Android tablet app world some serious thought. With so much in flux, you could be forgiven for putting the iPad versus Tablet Z decision off. After all, they're identically priced for the moment. But if you're buying right now, the choice is between a lightweight, extremely portable, Google-centric experience on a waterproof tablet with a light tablet app selection, and a heavyweight, not as portable, Apple-centric experience on a simpler, less expandable tablet with a massive software and hardware ecosystem behind it. There's a lot to consider. But hopefully, we've given you enough input to make the decision a bit easier. Folks, we have so much more on the Xperia Tablet Z here and at Pocketnow.com. So subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Stay tuned for a special Xperia Z-focused episode of the Pocketnow You Review dropping on June 6th. Give us a like if you enjoyed this one. Drop us a comment if you have something to say. Make sure and follow us on our various social networks. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.